This is the continuation of the chapter on gene to protein. And in this part, I'm gonna cover translation. An mRNA molecule is shown here at the top with its protein coding region in yellow. The five prime cap, a single backwards G nucleotide is in purple and the poly A tail is at the three prime end. The yellow portion of this codes for a complex transmembrane protein shown at the bottom. The process of translation reads the mRNA code <clears throat> to translate it into an amino acid sequence. This amino acid chain then folds up into a fancy protein. In translation, the ribosome brown processes an mRNA molecule in the same direction the mRNA molecule was made, five prime to three prime. The tRNA molecules come in and out of the ribosome, bringing amino acids in the correct order. Each species of tRNA reads the codons for a single amino acid tRNAs enter in the amino acyl site, the A site. They are bound to a single amino acid, here glycine. The peptidyl tRNA bound to a chain of amino acids is in the central peptidyl site, or P site. The amino acid closest to the peptidyl tRNA undergoes a polymerization, dehydration, reaction with the amino acid attached to the amino acyl tRNA. Now, the amino acyl tRNA will hold the polypeptide and the ribosome translocates downstream by three nucleotides, one codon. This places the former peptidyl tRNA, now just a naked, uncharged tRNA in the exit site on the left in this picture, and the former amino acyl tRNA, now holding a peptide chain in the central peptidyl site. <coughs> the A site is now free to accept a new amino acyl tRNA. For our purposes, the most important parts of a tRNA molecule are the amino acid attachment site at the three prime end and the anticodon located mid-sequence. Because of how tRNA folds, these two regions are opposite each other in the 3D tRNA. Note that a tRNA is a single strand of RNA that has complementary bases hydrogen bonding with each other to hold its structure together. Also note that even though we normally draw RNA with the five prime end on the left, for tRNA, we draw the three prime end on the left. This reflects the fact that the anticodon will be antiparallel to the mRNA codon. The fully folded structure of a tRNA looks a bit like an upside down letter L, and the way it is represented in your textbook reflects this. Again, we focus mostly on the anticodon and amino acid attachment site. An enzyme called aminoacyl tRNA synthetase matches a tRNA to its correct amino acid. Here's a figure of an aminoacyl tRNA synthetase joining a specific amino acid to a tRNA. Each aminoacyl tRNA synthetase fits one species of tRNA and one type of amino acid. There are many different flavors of tRNA and many different flavors of amino acid tRNA synthetase. Like DNA polymerization and RNA polymerization, this process decreases entropy and costs the cell energy here in the form of ATP. An amino acid tRNA synthetase here is shown joining a specific amino acid to a tRNA. And the tRNA that is now charged leaves the enzyme. It is now an amino acid tRNA. You should be able to identify each of the following on this model of a tRNA molecule, the five prime and three prime ends, hydrogen bonding, those are the dotted lines, unpaired regions, the anticodon loop, and the binding site for the amino acid. A ribosome has three binding sites for tRNA that I've already alluded to. The P site holds the tRNA that carries the growing polypeptide chain. It is in the center of the large subunit of the ribosome. The A site holds the tRNA that carries the next amino acid to be added to the chain, and the E site is the exit site, where discharged tRNAs leave the ribosome. Again, the E site is where the naked tRNA exits. The P site holds a tRNA linked to a polypeptide chain and the A site holds a charged amino acid tRNA. When a ribosome moves downstream on an mRNA molecule to read the next codon, it moves three nucleotides at a time. Any tRNAs hydrogen bound to the mRNA stay bound to the mRNA and do not move with the ribosome. 
the tRNA that was in the P site has lost its polypeptide chain and moves to the E site, where H bonding between it and the mRNA molecule is disrupted. It exits the ribosome. <clears throat> the tRNA that was in the A site has gained the growing polypeptide chain as the C-terminal amino acid undergoes a polymerization reaction with its amino acid. This frees up the A site for a new charged tRNA. This is a molecular model of a ribosome with an mRNA, tRNAs, and a polypeptide chain. There are three stages of translation, just like there were for transcription and DNA replication. Initiation, elongation, and termination. <clears throat> All three stages require protein factors that aid in the translation process, and I will not be showing those in this lecture. The initiator tRNA is a methionine tRNA, and it has the anticodon sequence UAC from 3' prime to 5'. Prime. It binds to the AUG start site past the 5' prime UTR of the mRNA. It and the small subunit of the ribosome trigger initiation. The large subunit of the ribosome can now join the small subunit. It initially places the methionine tRNA into the P site. This is the only tRNA that will come into the ribosome at the P site. The rest will come in at the A site. After initiation, elongation begins. A charged tRNA enters the A site. Its anticodon is complementary to the mRNA codon in the A site in the antiparallel direction. Once at the A site, the C-terminal amino acid of the growing polypeptide chain will leave the P-site tRNA <clears throat> and undergo a dehydration reaction that forms a peptide bond between it and the amino acid attached to the A-site tRNA. In this way, the polypeptide chain is moved to the A-site tRNA. This triggers the ribosome to translocate, moving three nucleotides downstream. The mRNA and tRNA interactions stay steady during this. Translocation places the uncharged tRNA in the E-site, where it exits the ribosome to be charged again by amino acid tRNA synthetase. The new peptidyl tRNA is placed in the P-site, leaving the A-site free for a new charged tRNA. This cycle repeats until the stop codon is reached. Termination occurs when a stop codon in the mRNA reaches the A site of the ribosome. The A site will accept a protein called a release factor. The release factor causes the addition of a water molecule instead of an amino acid to the growing polypeptide chain. This reaction releases the polypeptide and the translation assembly then comes apart. There is no tRNA that matches a stop codon. Here we see the release factor protein, which is shaped like a tRNA, uh, has entered the A site of the ribosome. The release factor triggers the release of the polypeptide from the peptidyl tRNA and the release of this last tRNA from the ribosome. This triggers the disassembly of the ribosome from the mRNA. <clears throat> a single molecule of mRNA can be read many, many times by ribosomes. A highly active mRNA can be read by multiple ribosomes at the same time. This is called a polyribosome. Each ribosome in a polyribosome makes a single polypeptide chain. Here's a question, and you can leave your answers to this in the comments if you like, and I'll check them out to see if you got it correct or not. Of the following, which of these pertain to replication, transcription, protein modification or translation. Each of these can be used more than, uh, sorry, can be used once or more than once. Some polypeptide chains have an amino acid terminal sequence that is recognized by signal recognition particle proteins. As these polypeptides are being made by the ribosome, an SRP will bind to it and shuttle it to the endoplasmic reticulum. The protein is synthesized through a small channel in the ER, and once it is processed, it ends up inside the ER. After this, it can go on to the Golgi, it can be secreted from the cell, or it can be embedded in a cellular membrane. <clears throat> 
The next few slides will connect the genetic basis of a mutation, a mutation in DNA, to a differently functioning protein that gives a phenotype. Comparing wild type to mutant hemoglobin, we see a single point mutation converting a T to an A and an A to a T on the opposite strand. This results in an mRNA sequence that is GUA rather than GAA. The ribosome and tRNAs will translate GAA as glutamic acid, a polar amino acid that is also a neurotransmitter and the delicious part of MSG. The mutant version is read as, va as valine. Valine is a nonpolar amino acid and is hydrophobic. Point mutations can also be silent. In this case, they have no effect on amino acid sequence. In this example, a G to A mutation results in a GGU codon instead of a GGC codon. Both of these code for the same amino acid, glycine. Mutations that change the amino acid sequence of a polypeptide are called missense mutations. That's like the one we saw in hemoglobin. Here the mutation was a C2A in the first nucleotide of a codon. This converted the code for glycine into the code for serine. Nonsense mutation converts an amino acid encoding codon into a stop codon. This results in a truncated protein that is often non-functional. Frame shift mutations result from insertions or deletions of nucleotides in non-multiples of three. These shift the reading frame of the triplet codons, resulting in missense or nonsense codons after the mutation. In this case, this is a frame shift that causes an immediate nonsense mutation. And here is a frame shift causing missense mutations in every codon after the mutation. Deletions or insertions in multiples of three will remove or add one or more amino acids to the polypeptide. I'm going to show that you should now be able to slides for this entire chapter. So I have another video on the Beetle and Tatum experiments to understand genes and enzymes. Garrett was the um, homogentesic acid person uh, who was looking at the black urine. You should also be able to explain the central dogma of molecular biology, compare transcription and translation in bacteria and eukaryotes, and explain what it means when we say that the genetic code is redundant. You should be able to detail transcription, including mRNA, RNA polymerase, the promoter, the terminator, the transcription unit, initiation, elongation, termination, as well as introns. And you should also be able to describe translation, especially using the terms tRNA, wobble, which is covered in your book and you do not need to know extensively, ribosomes, initiation, elongation, and termination.